Compose allows you to build beautiful UIs quickly. But together with the Android Studio tooling support, you're able to accelerate the development process even further with faster iteration and better debugging. Previously, we implemented a single answer option in the Jet Survey app. Let's see how Android Studio can help us write this efficiently. Let's go ahead and open the Jet Survey project in Android Studio and see what features it has in store for us. To start writing our composable, simply write COMP and press Tab or Return to automatically generate the composable. Let's call it Survey Answer. Hit Return and start implementing it. To implement the row inside our survey answer, we simply type WR and press tab or return to generate the row. Similarly, if you want to wrap a component around a row or another layout, you can right-click the component, select Show Context Actions, Surround with Widget, and then Surround with Row. These shortcuts are called live templates that help you generate common code snippets. Check all of them in your Android Studio preferences under Live Templates. Next, we can implement the content of our row. We start by adding an image that displays the lens drawable. We'll use the Painter Resource API to help load this. One of the challenges when working with drawables is that it's hard to know what the drawable looks like. But as you can see, the image shows an icon in our editor's gutter. This makes it easy to quickly preview and switch to another image. Let's go ahead and switch the image to display Spark. Next, we implement the rose text, and let's give it a custom color. You can see the color showing up in the gutter. Clicking it gives us a color picker that we can use to quickly change the color. Here you can enter RGB, hex, or easily pick colors out of the material color palette, which is quick and handy. Finally, we implement the radio button. Live templates and gutter icons help us write code while making fewer mistakes. Now, let's see how we can quickly iterate on our UI using previews. With our basic composable function, it's time to see how this composable actually looks. It would be great to be able to see our composable while we work on it, without having to run the whole app on a device. This is made easy by creating a preview composable. Simply type PREV and press Tab or Return. This generates a composable function with the extra at preview annotation. Let's call it Survey Answer Preview and tell it to render our Survey Answer composable. Something to keep in mind is that composable functions annotated with the at preview annotation cannot accept arguments, so we must provide all the data needed to preview a composable. Let's also wrap this in our app custom theme. The preview annotation tells Android Studio that this composable should be shown in the design view of this file. So when we click the split icon at the top and we press Build and Refresh, our composable preview shows up. Using the cog wheel in the gutter, we can specify all kinds of properties of this preview. For example, you can show the preview with a certain background color using night mode you can add the preview annotation to the same function multiple times, so we could also choose to add another preview that shows the form item with an extra large font. Closing this pop-up should then reflect all the changes that we made into our code. Oftentimes, you want to see how your composables look like in different configurations, in light or dark mode, in different font sizes, and so on. With the multi-preview feature in Android Studio, you can define an annotation class that itself has multiple preview annotations associated with it. Let's take a look. To make a multi-preview annotation in a file, define a custom annotation class with the desired preview configurations. Here we're adding a small font and large font version. You can also add another annotation for displaying both dark and light mode. Then, simply add that custom annotation to your preview composable and the different previews will be shown automatically. If you want to see how this preview behaves on an emulator or physical device, we can use the Run icon in the gutter. Instead of following the preview's configuration parameters, this will use the configuration of your device. When you update a composable, you have to build and refresh the preview or redeploy to your device. 
with live edit of literals, rebuilding isn't necessary for certain constant literals like integers, strings, and colors. For example, if we update the name of our superhero, we see that changes being updated immediately. Similarly, we can change the color of the text without needing to rebuild. Live edit takes this behavior even further and lets you adapt the contents of a composable function without needing to rebuild. Working on our form item, we can add modifiers, properties, or even remove or add child composables. All these changes are automatically reflected on your device. Live edit is a new experimental feature, so right now it's not available by default. Read the documentation to learn how you can enable it for your project. With previews, multi-preview, live edit of literals, and live edit, iterating on your design is a breeze. But what if there's something wrong with your composable and you need to debug it? Android Studio allows you to dig deeper so you can figure out what's wrong. First, let's open up our layout inspector. We have to select the process we're interested in, so let's select the Jet Survey app running in our emulator. It shows us the current screen of the app. On the left is a component tree that contains all the nodes in our UI hierarchy. We can expand all of them at once, and we can see what our composables look like. This tree can get quite big, so we can right-click on any node in the tree and show only its parents or its subtree to simplify our view. On the right, we see the attributes for each of the composables in our node. For Lambda attributes, we can also see a link to the specific line in code where the Lambda is defined, which helps a lot when debugging. While implementing a design, we can overlay a picture on top of the layout, which helps to verify if our design implementation is pixel perfect. In our case, we can see that there's still some more work to be done. From the previous episode, you know that using components from the Compose Toolkit will give us that pixel perfection. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to do. And that's it. That covers a lot of the helpful tooling provided by Android Studio to help us develop apps much faster in Compose. To summarize, with live templates, we can insert common code snippets much faster using abbreviations. Contextual gutter icons allow us to quickly change things like images and colors. The at preview annotation allows us to see our composables without having to deploy the entire app to a device. Both the live edit of literals and live edit allows us to see code updates in real time. If you've been following everything so far, congratulations. I hope these episodes have helped you get started with Compose. Coming up next, we have a tip from a community member on how you can speed up your learning with Compose. After that, we'll wrap up with a live Q&A with me and my teammates. You can tweet us your questions by using the madcompose hashtag. As always, like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon.